Good folks it's Darktree19 and welcome back to another what if and I believe this is what if Naruto was aired a big boss throne so like, comment, subscribe and share but besides all that enjoy the video. Chapter 4 Cold Fury Naruto stood on the large tanker class ship the director had acquired for the trip to snow country, as the mercenary watched the woman he, and the other leaf shinobi with him were hired to protect. The woman, a one Fujikei's Yuki was currently doing a scene on the ship for the movie she was starring in and with the decrease in temperature it was clear to Naruto they were getting closer to snow country. Did I ever tell you how I hate the freezing cold? Training or not? Thought Naruto to the others in his head. Several times actually. You should have seen Vulcan Raven in the Alaska wilderness. The man could walk into a blizzard with no shirt on and come back to the Shadow Moses base like it was an everyday occurrence, said Ocelot laughing at how so many troops and military personnel transferred to the base were surprised to see the man without a shirt in the freezing temperature filled land. No amount of training for this is going to prepare me for the cold, is it? Thought Naruto seeing Ocelot shake his head no. The only true training for the elements is hands-on training, said Ocelot knowing that while Naruto had been trained within his mind's own environment. It would only help set the groundwork for the actual environment outside his head. You look troubled, said Shino seeing Naruto staring out at the sea with what looked like a block of ice from an iceberg off in the far distance. I'm always troubled when it comes to high-profile missions. To not be troubled with the different variables that can spring up from such a mission means you are not doing your job. What about you? How are your bugs in the decreasing temperature? I imagine they are less than pleased? Said Naruto turning to see Shino nod. They are not happy, but they can endure it for now, and maybe even learn to adapt, said Shino knowing that it could beneficial to have such insects immune to the freezing cold in the long run. You're learning well. Insects are a lot like humans. They know what it means to survive almost any kind of environment and adapt to their surroundings. They give up a piece of themselves, but gain something new, and become stronger for it, said Naruto turning slightly to look at Shino, who nodded in agreement, and watched what he was watching. What do you think of Yuki-san? said Shino seeing Naruto shrug slightly. I don't think about her at all. I know only what I need to know. She can act, meaning she can deceive, and it's clear she is hiding something behind her facade of a tired actress. Be mindful when we get to snow country. Make sure the others know, said Naruto seeing Shino nod slightly. You suspect our enemies are waiting for us there, said Shino simply with Naruto letting a small smirk appear across his face. What better way to be defeated by our enemies, then on very terrain they will have the advantage in, and we do not. Our enemies are preparing for us in a place where they will know every spot we could arrive, land, and travel once entering the country. We wouldn't have been hired for this unless there was someone here wanting the woman captured to be held prisoner or just killed. The advantage will not be ours should we be attacked upon our arrival, said Naruto seeing Shino nod again in agreement. Do you have a plan? Perhaps we can discuss it as a group later before we arrive at our destination? Said Shino seeing Naruto shake his head no. Sadly, I do not have a plan, and can only offer advice on how to lessen our disadvantage in this situation. When we get closer to snow country, have Hinata-chan use her eyes to scan for multiple chakra signatures, and if she detects any when we get closer to land, said Naruto seeing the Abarame nod and then leave to carry out his duty. The only thing worse than being on this ship with Lee and Guy is your depressing way of handling the situation we're in Grey Fox, said Tenten trying to stay warm while walking up behind Naruto. Sorry if I don't sugarcoat it more to your taste Tenten-san. I would think someone, who wishes to take the lifestyle of the shinobi seriously would understand, and appreciate the seriousness that comes from the truth of my words, said Naruto with Tenten smiling at him. Of course I do you Baka. Though it wouldn't kill you to smile more on this mission. 
let your guard down a little while we're on this ship and enjoy things around you that life has to offer, said Ten Ten seeing Naruto smirk again. Is this your way of asking me out on a date? Said Naruto seeing Ten Ten blush and then glare at him. No. Kami, if we weren't on such an important mission, I'd punch you, and throw your ass overboard into the freezing water, said Ten Ten before she heard him laugh and was surprised he did at her words. Sorry. Just picturing you trying to do that is funny to me, said Naruto seeing the anger in the girl rise and saw the signs of her about to try. Oh, so you don't think I can huh? Said Ten Ten before she threw a punch at him, which he caught, and then her leg when she tried to kick him. Oh I know you can try, but you won't succeed, said Naruto pushing Ten Ten back and saw her growl at him. I'm not some weak fangirl. I've trained with weapons and have a taijutsu master for a sensei with his clone for a teammate. Let's see if you can handle me, said Ten Ten getting into her fighting stance while Naruto did the same with his own. We really shouldn't be doing this, given the mission we're on, and how important the client is, said Naruto before Ten Ten charged him while trying to keep him pinned in the narrow space on the side of the ship. What's wrong? Afraid a girl can do what a guy can't and beat the snot out of you? Said Ten Ten trying to land a hit on her opponent during the taunting, but found Naruto to be very calm, and collected in his fighting. No. I just don't want you to be unable to fight when the time comes during the mission, said Naruto in an almost mocking voice-like mannerism he learned from Ocelot. And was rewarded with an even angrier Ten Ten trying to hurt him for his troubles though it was proving to be more than difficult. The young Kunoichi kept trying for a good 20 long minutes before giving up, as it was clear to her that Naruto was not beatable at this point with her level of skill, and silently swore to one day reach a level where that would not happen. That was impressive. I hope you don't mind if we somehow tried to incorporate all those moves into the movie, said the director having seen it before ordering one of his crew with the second camera to film the fight the Merc and Leaf Shinobi just had. Just pay us both a reasonable fee for it and you got yourself a deal, said Naruto seeing the man nod before throwing him a large roll of money. Is that enough? Said the director seeing Naruto weigh it in his hands and calculate the amount. Yeah. It's enough. If you need more just let me know, but remember it's not cheap, and the others might not agree to it so easily like I have, said Naruto deciding to give half of this to Ten Ten. We're nearing our destination. The ship's captain says we have an ETA of about 30 to 45 minutes before snow country is visible and another 15 to 20 to land there, said Asama Sandyu walking up to Naruto knowing how the Merc wanted to be kept in the loop regarding the arrival into the country. Good. Before that happens, is there anything I should know about snow country? Its people? Or perhaps, the actress you didn't tell our destination to and who she really is? Said Naruto seeing the man grimace slightly. I guess there is no point in hiding from you or the others. Come on. Yuki will be in her room for a while and we can talk privately with the others, said Asama seeing the actress head to her room below the ship while along with Naruto went to collect the others. Sometime later, so she's an actual honest to goodness princess. A daughter to a daimyo, said Naruto seeing the man nod after everyone heard him explain everything. Yes. Up until now, I've had to keep Princess Koyuki hidden from her uncle, who wishes to use her father's special treasure to further oppress our homeland, and then start a war with the other neighboring countries. Koyuki is the rightful heir to the throne of Snow Country, but after her uncle killed her father, and being the only witness to the event, it is not in the woman's heart to lead, said Asama sadly knowing the woman's father had been a good man and was planning something to bring the Snow Country to a new age. Does her uncle know, who she really is, and that she's on her way here? Said Kurenai seeing Asama shake his head no. I have taken steps as her manager to keeping such a thing from happening, but Dodo is resourceful, and I wouldn't put it past the man to find a way to learn of it. He's not an idiot by any means, said Asama knowing Dodo would not let Koyuki go so easily. So what do we do? Said Kiba though it was clear he was eager to get into a fight. We continue with the mission. We're not in a position to say no anyway, said Naruto seeing the leaf shinobi around him nod. Thank you said Asama smiling at the dedication this group had, and felt reassured Koyuki would be protected. A sudden shaking of the ship brought the group of out of their musings, as they headed to the top of the ship, and saw the sudden iceberg that had risen seemingly out of nowhere. The now massive iceberg itself had a trio of individuals all wearing strange armor and wore shinobi headbands to signify their profession in life. They created ice. Are they like Yuhaku? Said Naruto missing his dear friend and not caring that he spoke out loud. Welcome to Snow Country. Or rather welcome to the waters near Snow Country. I am Roga Nadair and the leader of this group assigned to extract Princess Koyuki from your graces, said Roga seeing the two groups of Leaf Shinobi on guard while the one with the eye patch just narrowed his blue eye at them. 
This is unexpected and unwelcome, thought Naruto growling slightly at the trio. We were going to ambush you when the ship docked, but then we realized it would be so much easier on us to just crush you here at sea, and use the water to our advantage, said the pink-haired woman of the group to the left of Roga. You are frauds, said Naruto at them with a cold icy blue becoming increasingly angry at the trio of snow shinobi in front of him. What did you say? Said the bulky male to Roga's right. Your ice jutsu. I knew someone, who could manipulate it naturally because it was a bloodline limit, and was hated for it back in mist. You are of no such bloodline. You three are doing it in an unnatural way using that armor. I find it to be very upsetting, insulting, and it is dishonorable to the one person I could call a friend outside of the leaf, if only just for the shortest of time, said Naruto the image of Haku smiling at him, using the power of that bloodline to protect was precious, and fight with everything in your very soul. What these three were doing was a perversion of a bloodline dead with its last user being a pure soul. And it was pissing Naruto off to no end. How sad for you. Let's kill them already, said the pink-haired snow shinobi grinning at the group. Agreed, said the bulky one before leaping onto the ship. Bring it on, said Naruto, as he drew his HF sword, and leapt off the ship high into the air down towards the trio of snow shinobi on the iceberg. Ice style, ice spike jutsu, said Roga, as he shot a large spike of ice from the glacier, and aimed at the swordsman in mid-air. Naruto angled himself while in the air to dodge the attack, if just barely, and landed on the ice spike before running down it. The bulky one of the group quickly ran up to meet Naruto halfway, but was kicked away by a living projectile named Lee, who kicked the man in the head, and gave Naruto a thumbs up motion at the same time. Such a weird kid. Anyway, Naruto kept running at high speed towards Roga, and the pink-haired Kunoichi of a snow shinobi tried to intercept him this time. However, a barrage of weapons from Tenten made the woman back away, and out of range of Naruto heading for Roga. As for Roga himself, he was preparing to use another ice jutsu, but soon felt his body's chakra level was not what very high, and realized the Abarame on the boat had secretly sent his bugs to drain him of chakra while distracted by Naruto. Cursing at this turn of events, Roga leapt away at the last moment before Naruto swung his HF sword at him, and with chakra channeled into it had sliced through a large section of the iceberg he was standing on to make it his own little ice-made island. You underestimated us Roga-san. Now you will pay for such stupidity with the lives of your comrades, and your own life, said Naruto while angling his sword at Roga with the snow shinobi's partners engaged the others of team 8 and 9. Clearly. I assumed the leaf would send just one team to guard the princess, but not two of them, and whatever the hell you are, said Roga seeing his bulky teammate Mizori now being attacked by both Lee and Guy while Tenten along with Yuhi Kuranai were keeping the pink-haired woman Kakuyoku Fubuki at bay. Assumptions get you killed, said Naruto before leaping onto Roga's half of the iceberg and prepared to engage the snow shinobi in combat. Not this time. Retreat, said Roga, as he along with the other leapt away, but Mizore was too battered to escape, and was captured before being brought back to the ship where the others regrouped. You guys caught a big fish, said Naruto seeing the bruised man with a broken arm now tied up, and his armor looking like it had seen better days. Bite me freak. Once my teammates capture the princess we'll see who is laughing, said Mizore before spitting at their feet. He must be mistaken. We're guarding an actress. Not a princess, said Lee frowning while Naruto did the same. Not everything is what we think it is on the surface Lee. I think we need to know more and this cocky fool is going to tell us what we want to know, said Naruto picking the man up easily from his tied up position on the ground. Fat chance. I'll die before I talk said Mizore before crying out in pain when Naruto struck his injured arm. Doesn't bother me. Now, let's have private chat, said Naruto, as he dragged the man to someplace deep within the ship, and began his information gathering in regards to what the three snow shinobi were after. It took the crew's willpower not to puke over the railings while Mizore's screams echoed throughout the ship. It's a good thing Anko isn't here. She'd be finding a way to molest Naruto after he was done with our prisoner, thought Kurenai, as she heard more screams of agony and could not help in wonder just who had taught the boy the deadly arts I and T were known for. Everyone from both teams, their senseis, the client, and the actress were hired to protect Meet Me in the lounge area. Immediately, said Naruto's voice over the intercom system of the ship. Something big must have happened, said Tenten seeing the others nod and enter the shared lounge area that connected to the corridors leading to their rooms. It did. Our actress Fujike's Yuki isn't the woman we were told she was, said Naruto his hands and feet were stained in blood. Mizore's blood. What? Who is she then? Said Neji seeing the woman and her manager looking a bit nervous. 
she's actually the daughter of the late daimyo of Snow Country. Heir to the throne and princess of Snow Country with her real name being Kazana Koyuki. The one, who hired those snow shinobi was none other than her not-so-sweet uncle Kazana Dodo, and FYI, he killed his own brother for something buried in the country itself. Buried deep within the snow, said Naruto, as he saw the woman look away from everyone, and her manager Asama Sandyu looking guilty at keeping this from them. It's true I'm afraid. All of it. Ever since the assassination with Dodo taking over, I've done everything in my power to keep the princess from meeting the same end, and smuggle her out of snow country. It wasn't easy, but I was able to use a few of my friends, who are in the movie making industry to turn the princess into an entirely different person, and new identity to ensure Koyuki's survival under the name of Fujikaze Yuki, said Sandyu seeing Koyuki fall down into the nearby couch. What was the overall plan though? Aside from her survival I mean, said Kurenai, as she saw the elderly man smile, and look out at the nearby window. You see, for all its cold harsh weather, was a place of technological advancement like no other within the elemental countries, and our beloved daimyo only wished to expand it by finding a way to bring the season of spring to our country. Dodo wants to use what his brother was making into a weapon, but even if the man found it, in order to make the machine work, he needs something in the princess's possession, and that the something is the key. A key the princess has in her possession, said Sandyu, as he pointed to the pink jewel currently wrapped around Koyuki's neck, and the woman held it up in her hand. This? said Koyuki, as she saw Sandyu nod, and saw Naruto eyeing the jewel too with an intense look in his one blue eye. It's the key to the very machine Dodo wants to activate while thinking it's a weapon he can use to rule over snow country and possibly the world too, said Sandyu seeing the Koyuki rip off the necklace and throw it across the room with Hinata catching it before placing it in Naruto's hands. From what you speak of her late father, I doubt this machine is something used for war, and more towards your belief it was used to bring spring to this country, said Naruto before Koyuki's hollow chuckle came and turned to face her while he pocketed the pink item. Spring cannot be brought to this country. It's a cold, cruel place to live, and you're all about to know it firsthand along with all the suffering this place has to offer. Suffering you know nothing about, said Koyuki glaring at them all, but was quickly ended by a backhanded strike by Naruto, who then picked the woman up by the neck, and hoisted the princess to her feet. Suffering. You want to talk about suffering? My life is the definition of suffering lady. You can look the definition of suffering up in a dictionary and my face is right there for all to see. I was hated, beaten, persecuted, and basically manipulated for most of my life by the very person I once looked up to like a grandfather. Your life was easy compared to mine so don't think for one moment the suffering you've endured can compete with mine. Right now, there is a whole country of people waiting for you to return, and free them from their oppressor. Your uncle. Are you going to stand up on your own two feet? Or are you going to just wallow in pity, waiting for the end while on your knees, and begging for it all to be over? As for me, I'm not much for begging, and never will no matter what happens to me. So stay here, bitch, moan, complain, and wail in despair like one of those other kinds of tragic princesses. I don't care anymore. My only objective from here on out is killing that bastard of an uncle of yours and any who would follow him," said Naruto throwing the shocked woman down on the couch before walking out of the room with Hinata chasing after him. Grey fox Kun wait, said Hinata, as she saw him stop walking down the corridor, and look back at her before she caught up. Sorry you had to see that Hinata-chan. It's just, that's the second person I've met, who claims to have suffered, and created their own pity party. I'm tired of such parties. What she needs is a good kick in the ass for a wake up to reality, said Naruto banging his fist against the wall of the ship and the dent to it being visible. It's okay. I know your life has been hard Grey Fox, as I have seen it with my own eyes, and you are right about Princess Koyuki needing to wake up to reality, said Hinata, as she saw him smirk, and turned to face her fully now. With you to help me should I get out of line I take it? Said Naruto seeing her smile and nod in agreement since he did go overboard on some things. Of course. After all you have done for me, it is the least I could do, and will do should you require my help, said Hinata, as she had come a long way since her spar with Naruto, and then later learning to control her timid nature when around him. Thank you Hinata-chan. Now, let's go help the ship's captain on the bridge, and redirect our landing zone into snow country, said Naruto seeing Hinata nod knowing her eyes would help in scouting for the snow shinobi they encountered earlier. In snow country, you failed me? How could you fail Roga? I received advanced warning from a reliable source telling me the where, when, and how my niece would arrive. I had you strike first knowing you had the element of surprise and yet you still failed me. Explain, said Dodo seeing Roga and his teammate tremble in fear. 
We did have the element of surprise, but we were unable to secure the princess because the number of leaf shinobi guarding her, and then there was this one shinobi among them who was completely different. I've never seen anything like him, said Roga seeing the man on his throne scowling at him and knew Dodo didn't like excuses. The man didn't like anything. I don't care if one of the tailed beasts came at you. I expect you to do your job no matter what. Now I have to take matters into my own hands. Go back out there and find them Roga. Bring back the princess or you will wish a tailed beast was here, said Dodo seeing the two snow shinobi bow and then leave. When the two shinobi left, Dodo himself scowled further, as he was not pleased by this situation, and hated how the assured victory he believed was within his grasp was being taken away before taking it. He had been warned by an anonymous source, who had not given him a face, but Dodo knew the person was from within the leaf stating the princess was going to be on the ship to head home, and that for some backing in the future would they provide assistance in capturing Koyuki. Dodo was given day, time, and who would be on the ship protecting his niece while escorting her to snow country so the advantage was in his favor. So why had his forces been defeated by such a meager force? The opposition was a group of leaf shinobi, but Roga hadn't expressed fear in them, and more along the lines that of a single figure among them. Someone from the leaf, but different all the same, and had the skills needed to stop Dodo from achieving his ambition. Of course, Dodo knew the source of his info wasn't doing this, as he knew how shinobi took missions to protect clients while sometimes taking secret orders from the opposition to slay, or capture the one they're protecting for more money. It wasn't personal. It was just good business. Still, Dodo wasn't the ruler of this country by simply letting things go to chance, and only did when he knew the fix was in his own favor. Dodo's thoughts on the matter shifted however, when a bird flew suddenly into the room, and dropped a message onto his table before flying away out the window. Opening it up, the man read the message carefully before his eyes narrowed, and crushed the paper up in his hands at the information written on the parchment by his mysterious benefactor. Throwing the paper down onto his desk, Dodo summoned his loyal forces, as he had preparations to make, and deal with the information written on the paper. With Naruto a few days later, damn it's cold here, said Naruto realizing it was even colder when they landed than when sailing here on the ship. Can't argue with you there, said Kurenai, as she looked at the surrounding area they landed in and like him hated the feel of the bitter cold nipping at her skin like it was his own regardless of the heavy clothing they wore to combat it. What do you see Neji? Said Tenten seeing him scanning the area with the Byakugan. Mostly snow, trees, and mountains with little else in sight, said Neji with Hinata also confirming what he saw with her own eyes. The capital of snow country is much farther than before due to our change in course, but this leads us to the secret resistance group that's been building against Dodo and we can meet up with them before heading there, said Sandyu pointing to the destination they were heading. Good. With their help we can map out some kind of terrain we can cross, said Naruto seeing the man nod knowing the resistance had such information since they knew more about the area than most. This way, said Sandyu with Naruto, Team 8, Team 9, their senseis, Koyuki, and the film crew followed him to their destination. Only to find the camp where the Antitito forces had been slaughtered not that long ago. Oh man, said Kiba seeing the destruction of the camp and the bodies lying around while Hinata focused on not fainting at the sight of so much death. Not that anyone would blame her if she did. How could this have happened? Said Sandyu seeing the entire division he had been able to bring together now crushed like an insect. This happened not that long ago. The smoke is still rising from the ashes. Very recent by the looks of it. I'd say this occurred, roughly yesterday morning when everyone here was asleep, said Naruto looking around before kneeling and examining a pile of smoking ash he was rubbing against his armored fingertips. How? How did Dodo know about this place? No one knew where they would be, except myself, and not even the snow shinobi from before could have taken them all out, said Sandyu knowing that without the army they were back to square one. Dodo must have had help. Someone from behind the scenes, who told him of this area, and was given something in return, said Guy seeing the destruction of the area around him with disgust. But what? said Sandyu not understanding the situation fully. A favor in return most likely. Future support for services rendered. Power of some kind. Take your pick, said Naruto feeling his right hand twitch for his sword. You're feeling it too, said Tenten, as she felt her hand twitching for her weapons, and get ready for a fight. Yeah. What did this either hasn't left yet or those snow shinobi are back, said Naruto looking around for the foe hiding in the snowy terrain. Or both, said Lee knowing that was another possibility that too. Stay defensive and protect the princess, said Naruto hearing a rumbling sound of something coming towards them and could hear the gasp from the three legendary soldiers inside his head. No. It couldn't be, said Big Boss, 
as he hoped that such a monster would stay buried in the past, and not rise up to ruin this world again. But it was. What is that? Said Koyuki seeing the monstrous metal thing before them looking almost alive. Metal Gear. A war machine from the ancient world, said Naruto drawing his HF sword while Ocelot told him it was the Gecko model of Metal Gear, but clearly saw that this one was modified to fire arrows, and stabbing projectiles using the lack of sophisticated form of technology this world possessed. How do you even know what that is Grey Fox San? Said Tenten seeing the walking two-legged behemoth headed their way. Because I have inside information. Scatter, said Naruto leaping away, as the Metal Gear launched projectiles at him, and the others with the Janan teams moving to save the movie crew. Guy quickly grabbed Koyuki, as Kurenai grabbing Sandyu, and got them to safety away from the monstrosity that was the Gekko. Naruto quickly defected several projectiles with his HF sword before several more popped up around him looking at the young mercenary with their tri-red eyes and focusing entirely on his form. Why? Naruto had no idea. We have to help him, said Hinata seeing Naruto dodging and slicing through the legs or hip region of the metal gears while trying not to get hit. We can't. Whatever these things are can only be stopped by Grey Fox, said Kurenai seeing her student wanting to rush in and had to grab the girl by the shoulder to prevent it. But, said Hinata seeing Kurenai shake her head no. Your sensei is right. Our mission is to protect the princess from harm. Grey Fox is doing his part and we will do the same, said Guy seeing the others nod in agreement. It doesn't matter what you do. You're still doomed, said Roga, as he leapt from his position on the cliff behind them, and moved to snatch the princess. Only to be blocked by both Hinata and Neji. Roga's pink-haired teammate Kakuyoku Fubuki tried to flank them, but Guy along with Lee Leap kicked her into the cliff, and caused snow to avalanche onto her body. Roga encased the two Hyuga in an ice dome before rushing to grab the princess and ran off with his prize. Damn it, said Naruto, as he finished off the last crude Metal Gear Gecko knockoff, and rushed after Roga. Grey Fox wait. Ten Ten. Shino. Go after him, said Kurenai seeing the two nod while Kiba and Akamaru were digging a hole under the ice dome to get the two Hyuga out of it. We have the snow shinobi here contained, said Lee having removed the kunoichi from the snow and tied up while giving his good guy pose. I need a vacation, thought Kurenai, as she wanted one so badly right now, and wondered if it would be cruel to temporarily hand over her team to Anko. Possibly. Maybe. Yeah it would. Damn. With Naruto, hey. Come back here you bastard, said Naruto seeing the man heading higher up in the terrain where the clouds above were thick. Thick enough to hide something. Sticks and stone my boy. Sticks and stones, said Roga mockingly, as he leapt into the air, and grabbed a feeble ladder that connected up into the clouds where an airship was waiting him. Not bad. Looks like there are some things in this new world that are marginally better than ours, said Ocelot seeing Big Boss agree. Not bad, said Big Boss clearly impressed. Gush over it later. I have a princess to save. Man I feel like I'm in one of those cheesy romance novels when the noble knight saves the princess and they fall in love at the end, thought Naruto climbing the ladder after jumping up to grab it with a little help in using shadow clones. Leaving Ten Ten and Shino on the ground. Damn it. When he gets back down here, I'm so kicking his ass, and make him beg for mercy, said Ten Ten with righteous fury in her eyes with Shino raising an eyebrow at her. Was it him or was Ten Ten's anger a way to mask her worry for Grey Fox? Climbing all the way up the ladder, Naruto headed towards the bridge knowing that was where someone like Dodo, and the princess would be since it was a position of power when it came to ships like these. Making his way through the corridors, the Namikaze heard echoed voices coming from across the way, and recognized the female voice to be Koyuki's. They were arguing. How could you uncle? Your own brother? My father. All for what? Answer me, said Koyuki angrily, as Naruto saw through a small opening of the door to the bridge with Roga holding the woman back. Power. It's always been about power. Your weak father spent so much time focusing on helping his country, he didn't realize that the lost advanced technology our country has could allow us to rule the world, or expand our domain even further. I decided to do what he didn't have the courage to do and use this country's power as it was intended for. You already saw the lost machines of war I recovered and modified to wipe out the resistance forces. Once I'm done activating your father's machine, I'll have the power to make many more like them, and crush any opposition that stands in my way," said Dodo seeing the horror-filled look on her face and smiled at the sight of it. You bastard! How did you even know about the location of the encampment? No one knew about it except Sandyu and I know he would never betray them to you, said Koyuki struggling some more. Some outside help ironically from the leaf told me. I don't know who exactly, 
but I know they didn't want this mission to succeed, or you to live past today for that matter, said Dodo seeing his niece glaring at him. You lie, said Koyuki seeing Dodo smirking at her. Why would I do that my foolish niece? Though given your life growing up after your father's death since becoming an actress I'm not really surprised. You've lived in such a pampered lifestyle of hotels, celebrities, and influential people responsible for financing your movies. Never knowing of the true darkness, pain, and horror the world outside of yours truly entails outside of losing your father when you were just a child. Shinobi are trained to lie, deceive, and betray even their own clients if another comes along with a lot more money to do the opposite of the current mission, said Dodo grinning at the princess glaring further with denial still in her eyes. Which is why a mercenary was hired into the fold, said Naruto kicking down the door and turning the heads of the people in the room to look at him. You, said Roga seeing the grinning face of Naruto looking at them. It feels so good to be acknowledged, said Naruto walking into the room while his eye behind the patch did its thing. I see you're the one Roga fears, said Dodo not seeing why and yet felt this boy was indeed strong. As you should too. I've come for your heads, said Naruto drawing his HF sword and looked ready to charge forward. Try anything and she dies, said Dodo pointing to his niece. You kill your own niece? Your blood? Said Naruto seeing Dodo grin. Of course. It was so easy to kill my brother. Killing her would be no less difficult, said Dodo seeing Naruto lower his weapon. Now what, said Naruto seeing Dodo grin. Drop your weapon, said Dodo simply. Let her go, said Naruto looking at Koyuki with calculating eyes. You know I can't do that, said Dodo still smirking. You could actually, but it's not in your nature to give in to others, and the fact you're just a team doesn't help you either, said Naruto before throwing his HF sword at Dodo, who knocked it away behind Roga, and scowled at him. Stupid fool. Kill Koyuki, said Dodo, but saw the HF sword he knocked away was really the boy in a henge, and the one throwing him was really a shadow clone with the real one bouncing off the glass window before kicking Roga in the head with enough force to snap the man's neck. And freeing Koyuki in the process. Still think you can win? Said Naruto drawing his HF sword for real this time and saw the man was furious with him to no end. I will not be stopped. Not by you, my niece, or the leaf. I will rule this world or burn all that I cannot have to the very ground, said Dodo before removing his robes to reveal his chakra armor. Has anyone ever told you that your actions are the sign of a sore loser? Said Naruto in a mocking tone, as he saw Dodo's face go into a rage-filled look that spoke of him being psychotic and was currently aimed at the young mercenary. Die, said Dodo, as he launched a gauntlet hand at Naruto, who just dodged, and let the heavily armored appendage hit the control in the bridge to shock the man with a strong amount of electricity. I don't take requests from weaklings like you. I just kill them, said Naruto stabbing the man in the back and channeled Kyuubi's chakra into it to make sure the pain was much more than it would be without it. No, yelled Dodo, as he felt his life being literally being burned away and could have soared he saw the devil grinning at the soul about to be received into hell. With the burned corpse of Dodo now on the ground, Naruto focused on the control system meant to keep the airship in the air, and realized this thing was tilting now with the view of very large mountains coming their way. Realizing they had little time to get out of the airship before they got blown to hell, Naruto put away his sword, and quickly grabbed the still down princess before carrying her bridal style to the nearest exist. Would this be a bad time to ask if you're afraid of heights and falling from them? Said Naruto seeing Koyuki look down over the railing and then back at him with a glare. No. No. Don't you dare, said Koyuki, as she screamed the rest of the way when Naruto jumped off the airship, and a couple hundred shadow clones behind him made a living rope to stop them from falling harshly on the cold snowy ground below before they stopped falling halfway down. Gotcha, said Naruto grinning at a frightened Koyuki, who growled at him, and was less than an inch from his face. If we weren't still so high up, I'd punch you in the face, and kick you between the legs, said Koyuki seeing Naruto raise an eyebrow at her. Well then you're really going to hate this next part of our descent to the ground, said Naruto before his shadow clones went poof and they continued falling with Koyuki screaming in fear. Before Naruto flipped back and landed on his feet with a loud thud that made a large crater on the ground with Koyuki completely unharmed. Putting the shaking woman on her feet, Naruto fell on his butt, and let the pain he felt in his legs slowly leave him before getting off the ground again only to be slapped in the face by Koyuki. Baka! You could have gotten us both killed. Do you think you're some kind of immortal or something? Said Koyuki seeing her slap didn't have any real effect on him like she thought it would. Immortal? No. I just don't fear death. Something, I think your father, and I both had in common with each other, said Naruto grinning at her, 
as she stiffened at his comment before turning to see the rest of the group plus prisoner appear up on the hill, and were happy to see they survived. You guys all right? Said Kur and I seeing the two looked okay aside from the snow that got on them. More or less. It is a good thing you're here since the fireworks are about to start, said Naruto pointing to the airship angling towards the mountains before it crashed and then exploded in great ball of fire. What happened to Dodo? Said Guy not seeing him around the area. Went down with his ship, said Naruto simply with the group nodding. Doesn't sound like the guy, said Kiba scratching his head with a frown. That's because I made him after turning his body into a corpse, said Naruto with a look at Kiba while the Inuzuka finally understood what he was referring to. So the threat to Princess Koyuki is over? Said Lee while he and Guy held onto their pink-haired snow shinobi of a prisoner. Yeah. For the moment anyway. Question now is, will this one be a problem for us and the princess? Said Naruto pointing to defeated form of Kakuyoku Fubuki seeing her head bowed in submission with her chakra armor too damaged to use. I'm not a threat anymore. Dodo was my employer. With him dead, I have no reason to fight you, or kill the princess, said Fubuki looking up at the eye patch wearing boy. And what reason do you have that would make us believe those words? Said Naruto seeing the beaten pink haired woman again lower her head in submission. I can offer you nothing to prove my words are true except my honor as a shinobi of snow country. Please, show mercy, said Fubuki with her head still down. What do you think? Thought Naruto wanting the opinion of the four being in his head. Give her a second chance, said Frank simply. I agree. Another chance, said Big Boss before he looked at Ocelot. Might as well. Just remember though, if she tries anything, then you can kill her, her and be done with it, said Ocelot knowing if this woman would forfeit her second chance if she tried anything. I say kill the bitch, but that's me, and I my hatred for women with pink hair, said QB since it didn't like the Sakura girl back in the village and the pink hair reminded the fox of the girl. Okay. That's three spare her life and one bias smear her blood all over the snow to ensure the elimination of the threat, thought Naruto before drawing his HF sword and saw the woman shiver in fear. He's going to kill me. I know it, thought Fubuki with her eyes closed to wait for the end. When the sound of the blade descending upon her was heard, Fubuki cringed when she felt the wind of the HF sword, and waited for the pain before death could claim her. For a second, she thought he had cut through her head, and was mere seconds from truly dying. However, Fubuki opened her eyes the moment the bindings that made her their prisoner fell to the ground, and she saw Naruto put away his weapon. I show trust Snow Shinobi. A rarity in itself if you ask anyone from the leaf. Do not make me regret showing such a thing or I will make you beg for my mercy. Mercy I do not give out a second time, said Naruto before walking away from her before motioning for Koyuki to follow him. Where are we going? Said Koyuki while seeing Naruto walking up a clear path near the mountain. Simple. We're going to activate your father's machine, said Naruto still walking up without slowing down. W what? But my uncle wanted to use that machine as a weapon, said Koyuki before seeing Naruto stop and turn slightly to face her. Do you honestly believe your father would make a massive machine for war and leave you the key to its activation? Said Naruto before continuing his walk towards the device he saw while hanging on by a thread of shadow clones. No. I suppose not, said Koyuki before catching up with him and taking off the jeweled necklace that she knew was the key to activating the machine. Besides, your father wanted to bring the season of spring to snow country, and as well all know the season of spring is a season where life is created. That is what this machine is princess, said Naruto, as he took held out his hand, and Koyuki put the key in it before putting the key in the machine to start it up. And within moment brought the season of spring to snow country. It's been a long time since I've seen something as beautiful as this sight before me. It makes you remember your humanity after being on the battlefield for so long, said Big Boss with the others agreeing. Yes. The season of spring soothes even my demonic heart, said QB, as even the fox loved the season, and what it held. Snow Country Capital A few days later celebrations were in order at the coronation of the new daimyo of Snow Country, now renamed Spring Country, and the guests of honor were the female daimyo's escort from the leaf. Each were given a medal to show proof of their valor and courage in fighting to protect Koyuki from the snow shinobi that threatened her life. Fubuki was appointed the daimyo's personal shinobi bodyguard while Sandiyu continued to be Koyuki's manager for movies and her chief royal advisor on matters of the people. Of course that wasn't the only thing that happened, which Naruto found out, as the actress had been chosen for the part in Jiraiya's Icha Icha Paradise movie, and only agreed to do it on one condition. That Naruto himself agreed be the leading male role in the movie, as the manly stud, Jiraiya's words in the script, 
of a male lead, who would be intimate, Naruto's interpretation, with the princess, and eventually marry her before living happily ever after for all time. A cheesy ending to be sure, but that was to be expected from a rite of smut, and his way of acquiring inspiration for such things leaving much to be desired. The question for Naruto now was, would he be a part of the movie? First, he needed the opinion of those Naruto trusted, and asked his four guests in his head. The results were less than encouraging. I never did it. Didn't want people thinking I was joke, said Big Boss knowing he had been offered at one point to play in action movies and pretend to be what he was rather than be what he was. Me neither. Then again, I was always meant to keep a low profile, and covert status a very guarded secret, said Ocelot knowing that he and Big Boss had the faces for films. They just didn't like the idea of doing it. It's your life Naruto. These two take their soldier status more seriously, but times are not the same like they were with us, and I don't think anyone will think less of you for being in this, film, said Frank knowing that while an offer was never presented to him for the obvious reasons, it should mean Naruto couldn't try it out, and see for himself. And you Kyuubi? Thought Naruto seeing the fox grinning. Is the woman going to play the actual part where you and her get it on? Said Kyuubi curiously while leaning closer to its cage. Yes, said Naruto with a raised eyebrow. Then there's your answer, said Kyuubi laughing at Naruto's scowling expression. You're not helping. Thought Naruto before letting out a sigh knowing this could kill any kind of relationship with women back in the leaf since there were a select few back in the village that were worthy of his attention. Look kid. What you do in life, is entirely up to you, and neither of us will think any less of you for doing this film. And we certainly won't hold it against you if your decision about this movie is to not do it, said Big Boss with Kyuubi snorting. I will, said Kyuubi seeing Naruto glaring back. Well, Kyuubi will, but the fox doesn't count, said Big Boss with a smirk. Hey, said Kyuubi getting a bit peeved at that remark. The question for you now Naruto, is what you want, and if you will ever regret doing it? Said Big Boss seeing Naruto close his eyes in thought for a moment before opening them. I think I know what to do, thought Naruto before his mental form faded from their sight. He going to do it, said Kyuubi in an all-knowing manner while grinning a grin which was a mix between an evil, and perverted grin. Quiet you, said Ocelot feeling that making such a movie was not the way to go. Let the fox be Ocelot. This might actually help Naruto get more clients when it comes to being a mercenary. Plus, if this movie's does well, he'll get a lot more income, and support himself with such financial backing, said Frank while Ocelot just scoffed at the idea. We'll see. Though I doubt anyone will take him seriously after making this movie, said Ocelot before turning to see Big Boss smirking at the two. That all depends on how good he is in the movie, said Big Boss with Kyuubi letting out a demonic chuckle. And that is where I come into play in teaching the kit. You taught him your ways of being a solider. I will teach him how to be an expert lover, said Kyuubi seeing the three figures in front of its demonic form raise an eyebrow. How? said Big Boss curiously. Before being sealed up for the last couple hundred years into three members of the Uzumaki clan, even before Uchiha Madara used his damn Sharingan to make me bow to his whims, I was quite the, man for a vixen to have for such things, and no one here has the years of experience that I do when it comes to bringing untold pleasure to the female form. By the time I'm done teaching the kit, the princess will be begging for more from him, and then some, said Kyuubi letting out a demonic laugh that echoed throughout Naruto's mind. Oh yes. Life would be getting more interesting for Naruto soon enough. Omake premiere of the Icha Icha Paradise movie, I can't believe you dragged me here for this Jiraiya. This movie better have more than just smut in it or I'm ending your perverse ways before the credits finish, said Tsunade, who was with Shizune, Kurenai, Niko, Hironbu, Guy, Kakashi, and the other rookies with their senseis in the audience filled with people. Mostly perverts. Don't worry Tsunade Haim. You have my word it will be magical, said Jiraiya, who was currently sweating inwardly since he didn't tell Tsunade about Naruto being the male lead, and currently trying to get out of his restraints in his seat so he couldn't grope the woman during the film's debut. Where's Grey Fox? Said Kurenai looking around for the mercenary and noticed Hinata was missing. Anko too. Princess Koyuki has a private booth above us. Anko is Naruto's date, Tuya is with them since she needs to be watched, and Hinata was allowed to join them because she was on the mission, said Tsunade seeing the room darken and the movie about to play. That and being a Hyuga doesn't hurt, said Jiraiya knowing the girl's clan status also helped. That too, said Tsunade sensing Jiraiya was hiding something from her and was more interested in fleeing than groping. Deciding to figure that out later, the female Hokage focused on the movie, and soon into the smutty film knew why Jiraiya wanted to flee. 
Her killer intent spiked for a second, but was silenced by witnessing the perverted smut her godson was starring in with the now daimyo of Spring Country, and watched the movie from beginning to end down to every last detail burned into her mind. When the line of credits began rolling, showing Naruto's codename across from his lead role's name, the light slowly turned on, and Jiraiya saw the well beyond angry look on Tsunade's face. Struggling more than ever, Jiraiya quickly tried to think of something that would calm the raging beast rising from her seat, and the Genjutsu mistress joining in the need to unleash female fury upon his restrained body for the perverse vision of a smutty book-turned-movie he had created. Anything to say to me before you die a slow painful death? Said Tsunade cracking her knuckles and preparing to unleash untold amounts of pain. Ah, uh, ah, uh, where's Shizun? Said Jiraiya looking behind Tsunade to see the Hokaye's own assistant was not with them. Don't expect me to fall for that baka. She's right, hey where is Shizun? Said Tsunade while looking around for the woman, only to find she wasn't there along with Tenten, Ino, and Nico. They soon heard the moaning of pleasure echoing from a private booth above them. Spring Daimyo Koyuki's private booth to be exact. Oh Grey Fox, your tongue is doing wonders on my pussy, and your hands know how to pleasure my tits, said the voice of Shizun making Tsunade's eyes now bulge out of their sockets. Yes. Yes. Keep thrusting Fox Kun. Harder, said Hinata, which made Kurenai's face go pale, and faint knowing she had failed to protect the Hyuga heiress from the wickedness of perverts. Yeah. Stick me. Give it all you got Foxy Kun. Yeah. I'm your snake bitch, said Anko's voice echoing from the booth loud and proud. Could this get any worse? Said Tsunade rubbing her temples at the swelling headache. Where's my sister? And my mom? Said Kiba realizing they weren't there either. The twin sounds of howling in pleasure from the booth gave Kiba his answer, which followed by the thump. Sound he made when fainting, and finally the nightmare the Inuzuka had of the female members of his clan being banged by Naruto. Does that answer your question? Said Jiraiya though he soon regretted it when his voice got the attention of the Hokage now even further upset at what his actions caused. Die you pervert, said Tsunade in a demonic voice, as she unleashed her fury on a poor, defenseless, and tied up Jiraiya with the sounds of his screams of pain making the cries of pleasure from the women in the private booth above. Lucky bastard, said Shino before leaving to get a refill on his popcorn and drink.